What's up, you guys? It's your boy Felipe, and in this video, we're gonna talk about how I locked up a 16 unit apartment complex. So let's get started. guys before we get started though seriously it really helps when you guys hit that blue thumbs up give me a thumbs up for the video see if you like it uh, and then leave me a comment midway through let me know if there's some questions that you have throughout this video uh, I'm gonna try to go as detailed as possible into how we locked up 16 apartments uh, and how we're gonna fund them how we're gonna close the ups and downs and all that so before we get started though please hit that like button it really helps me out all right so a lot of you guys know that I own a company called Rat Race to Fi. It's an educational company where we teach others how to get out of the rat race and into financial independence. Uh, we do it through real estate. Other people do it through business, through investing, through crypto, whatever the case may be. But I wanted to talk to you specifically about how we are using um, real estate to get out of the rat race and how this 16 unit apartment complex goes into detail of how that works. So first things first, we have Rat Race to Fi, right? So it's about 50, 60 members. We cap it. We're not open to everyone. Uh, we got to make sure that you're a good fit. We're a good fit for you. This isn't somewhere where you're coming just to get knowledge, but we want everyone to bring knowledge as well. And that doesn't mean you can't be a newbie. It, it, it also means that you have to want to help others, right? Um, so in the mastermind, we had a retreat. And in this retreat, um, we met with a couple of the members. We were talking business. We were talking about credit. We were talking about getting loans and deals and how hard it is for some people. Um, and, and, and during that conversation, uh, an apartment complex purchase came up. Now I'll stop the story right there because I like, I like this because it is the importance of networking and getting around other like-minded individuals, which makes a huge difference when investing in real estate. It's very important to surround yourself with the goal that you want. If you're looking to be, uh, I don't know, let's say, uh, in the gym and work out, then it probably would help if you surrounded yourself with other people that are doing the same thing. So for example, in this retreat that we had, we surrounded ourselves with other like-minded investors. Now, there was about four of us that kind of gravitated towards each other. Uh, and we talked about the opportunity or the maybe availability of buying in a small apartment complex together. Uh, put in all our money, uh, find a good deal, and take it down. So that's what we decided to do. We were like, um, let's let's get some money together. Let's find a unit that would work, uh, and we'll go from there. So each one of the partners brought something. For example, one of the partners was a property manager. Uh, he managed in a certain area. Uh, another one of the partners um, had a knowledge when it came to running the numbers and checking KPIs, what works, what doesn't work, um, making sure that we are all in line in sync. That's very important, right? Emails need to be sent out. Text messages need to go through. Zoom calls need to be scheduled. Uh, and the other two or three partners were financials. Uh, now, everyone had money, but everyone has their own strengths and weaknesses. Some of us were sales. Some of us were uh, great with keeping things together. Uh, you know, so everyone brought their own strengths and weaknesses. Uh, and we were like, wow, this, this could actually work out. So the next thing we did uh, was we had a Zoom call and we discussed our goals, discussed what we wanted to do, and did we align? Did, did everyone align with what we wanted to do? And in conclusion, we did. We had an overall 30,000th view of the similar goals. That being said, uh, one day, one of the members came and sent a text message to the group text that we had and said, hey, I think I found a property that might work. So we looked at it, we underwrote it, and uh, we were like, hey, this 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 looks like it could work out. The the units were sent, every, every member did their own small due diligence to kind of see if it would work in their portfolio and did it match their goals with cash flow? with, uh, uh, did we have the right team in place to manage this? Uh, and we did. So we had everything in place. Uh, so we put in a low ball offer. That low ball offer got rejected. What happened from there, uh, the property they wanted, I believe they wanted 1.2 million, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and uh, we put in an offer at 900,000 and it was rejected. There's something about that million dollar mark, right? That people have it in their brain that they don't want to go under. And here, were, here was the other issue that we had. Our property manager is one of the largest property managers in this town and his name was on the offer. So now 
the seller knew that one of the largest property management companies in the area wanted to buy this property. So the negotiation was a little harder. He was like, no, this guy's interested. He's definitely gonna go up in price. So what happened? Uh, he didn't budge much. We got it down to 1.15 uh, and we, 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 we decided to take it down. Uh, and then the process starts of now we're under contract. So what happens now? Well, we gotta find financing from the bank. We gotta start due diligence with inspections and we have to make sure that all the members have the money. So first things first, do we all have the money? Yes, we have the down payment. It's 20% of 1.15 uh, from, you guys can do the math. From there, we pitched it out to a bank and started the inspection process at the same time. Inspection came back, everything was fine. And at the last minute, our funding fell through with one bank. The bank said, I cannot fund this deal. Apparently, it was too large of a loan for this smaller bank. Now, what that means is these banks are used to doing single family homes, maybe some multi right up there with maybe capping out at like six or 700,000. And this just pushed that threshold. Another problem we were running into was that we hadn't done a deal together. Now, all of us independently had investor um like history, like I had bought a bunch of units and the other guys had bought their own a bunch of units, but none of us had history together. So that was a problem for the bank. Uh, so we had to convince them that we were gonna be good partners, yada, yada, yada. Uh, no, they said no. So now we're like, oh my gosh, what's going on? We're gonna lose this deal because we can't get the funding. And what ended up happening was we went to another bank, pitched them to the deal, they fell in love with the deal and looked past that we hadn't worked together because they liked the deal so much. The numbers worked very, very well. And they looked at more that we already had independent history, but now we we're gonna start creating history together. Now, it's funny the way God works though, because in this certain situation, this bank uh, is a larger bank that does longer and, and larger loans. And that's good for us because we are now able uh, to build a relationship with a bank that's used to doing loans like this versus just wasting our time with a bank that doesn't. So the bank allowed us this opportunity to buy this property. Uh, they've given us what's called a commitment letter, which they are committed to buying this property with us as a partner. The only thing now it is that it has to appraise. We are very certain that it's gonna appraise. The rents are high, it's in a good area. Uh, that's, not, that's not fearful at all. So, so, so that's in a good position. Um, what happens next is we'll close on the property. We'll take over. It'll be managed by uh, our team member that's a property manager. It'll stay in that portfolio, he'll manage it. We'll create cash flow, and the goal is to maximize rents, um, update the property, maximize rents, and then sell the property in three to five years into what's called a 1031 exchange, which basically means we won't pay taxes on our profits if we roll those profits into the next property, meaning we won't have to pay any cap gains, we won't have any anything like that. The cash flow will tax independently each partner as they wish. Uh, and we'll 1031 exchange that property into a bigger property from 16 to potentially 30. Uh, a couple years later, bigger and bigger and bigger. We want to own uh, 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 something like that. Um, so that's the story so far of where we're at with this 16 unit apartment complex. If you liked it so far or have questions about any of this, please put it in the comment section uh, and we'll explain as much as we can. 1031 exchange, how we got the deal, how we got the money, how we got the funding, um, all that. This is just a 30,000 foot view. Uh, let me know what you think and we'll go from there. Thanks guys.